Welcome back. We are focused in Washington on the Justice Department as Attorney General William Barr is expected to release a redacted version of the Mueller report within the next few days. Barr's four-page summary of the special counsel's findings created a lot of controversy two weeks ago. Now a fresh argument on Capitol Hill from Democrats who are demanding that they see the full unredacted version and it be released to Congress. Joining me right now exclusively this morning is Republican Congressman from Georgia, Doug Collins. He's the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. And Congressman, it is good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. Glad to be with you, Mary. You have been releasing uh, the transcripts of some of the closed door testimonies of uh, various witnesses. Your most recent has been Jim Baker, the lawyer at the FBI. Looking at all of these transcripts that you've released so far, what strikes you mostly, Congressman? What, what is the takeaway that we need to focus on from all of these transcripts you've released? The thing that strikes me the most is it goes back to a, to a certain group. You know, the media, especially the liberal media, wants to portray this as the FBI and all, and it's thing, all against the going forward. But really what we find is Peter Strzok, uh, we find Strzok, McCabe, Lisa Page, we see Baker, we see Comey, of course, and all of this coming back to everything that we go back to following all the way from the Clinton investigation through the beginning of the Russia investigation through the Mueller investigation, we go back to this really corrupt cabal that is, uh, is involved in everything. And I think it's really interesting when you have Baker actually saying in the transcripts we released this past week where he thought originally that Clinton would be, have been indicted, that she would have been charged in this, and was actually talked out of it uh, by some of the others in Comey and others. But then we also found out from Lisa Page's transcript on this same issue that well, they were actually being pressured by the Department of Justice, even up as, uh, from Attorney General Lynch, who actually said, let's call it a matter instead of an investigation. So what bothers me the most is you had this politicization of very high-level individuals at the FBI and the Department of Justice that were not acting in the best interest of the country. They were acting in the best interest of their own selves and their own careers. Yeah, so how far up the Obama ladder does this go, knowing that now we see suggestions that it wasn't just the cabal of people at the top of the FBI and the DOJ. You had the State Department. You had other intel agencies. You had Sidney Blumenthal, Hillary Clinton's good friend, sending information through the State Department. How far up to the Obama administration does this go, sir? Well, it, it, we're seeing more and more, and I'm, I'm glad to hear Chairman Graham in the Senate is going to be continuing to look into this. I'm glad to hear Bill Barr is saying that we need to see the predicate for this. We need to know why this actually happened, because what we were seeing, and, and no one, Democrat, Republican, Independent, it doesn't matter your background. You do not need the Department of Justice in a position where uh, the justice is being dispensed in a political fashion, not as a blind rule of law. Hearing the things out of the State Department, seeing this previous administration, they were uh, just, again, everything was politicized toward what they wanted to do and the spin that they wanted to give. What we need to have here is a continued investigation that Bill Barr has said he's willing to take, and in doing so, he's drew the ire of Democrats who don't want those things exposed. They don't want the things that we've been talking about for a long time. An attorney general who met with a former president whose wife was being investigated on a tarmac in, in a, on, at an airport uh, where they supposedly discussed their grandkids and other things, that's just not right. Now we're seeing also the, the pressure from Loretta Lynch saying it was an, not an investigation, it's just a matter. You know, anything they could do to play down this, but it all goes back to really what we're seeing is a politicization, which is worse because it gets into our FISA court, our FISA applications, which were really when you get to it, this was the thing that happened, that how we got our FISA courts was the abuse of power from administration officials and folks back in the 70s. Yeah, I want to talk about what happens next because the Michael Horowitz report is about to come out. We understand in about a month, we'll see what that, that shows us. And then at the same time, you've got this crisis happening at the border. Order, and you just celebrated 100 years, your colleagues just celebrated 100 days, rather, pardon me, 100 days in the new Congress. So the Democrats have been in the majority for 100 days. We've got a list of some of the votes that you all have taken in this first 100 days. Uh, they, they defended President Obama's Affordable Care Act. For the People Act is basically about elections. That was their number one priority, <laughs> changing the elections. Uh, you've got things on anti-Semitism, hate. You've got things on, on transgender. So tell us about the first 100 days with the Democrats in charge. 
Well, the first 100 days has ended with a pull card of nothing in, in, except empty promises and press releases. It seems like this is the way that uh, Ms. Pelosi and the Democratic Party want to govern now, and that is by press release saying, here's what we're against. Almost one in five of rule bills in the first 100 days have dealt with resolutions that have no force of law. They're simply expressing what they feel. Uh, and then when we get into the actual rule bills that actually passed with bills, such as H.R. 1, which is they called the For the People Act, it's actually for the Incumbent Politician Act, and because it does nothing except corrupt our political system, especially our elections, makes them more politicized with lawsuits that you could file anywhere in the country if you don't like the outcome of an election. It actually goes against to where you would actually criminalize someone if they tried to stop someone like a 15-year-old from voting. If you stop, you would actually be guilty of a felony under that law. It's just bad law. It's just bad policy. And when you only have to govern by press release, you really, after 100 days, have to look back and shake your head and say, is our blind uh, disgust with President Trump driving all that we do. And frankly, that's what we see, Maria. They are so upset that President Trump is still president, and they want to make it clear to everyone that they're going to do everything they can to flip that next year. They've abandoned all pretense of an actual logical agenda, especially when immigration is something we could fix. So this is non-binding resolutions that have no teeth in terms of actually impacting real laws that actually impact people's lives uh, and and more about just sort of proclamations of what of what they like and what they don't like meanwhile on terms in terms of the border what can you tell us lindsey graham's going to come back from his break and he's going to put legislation together give us your sense of what's happening right now at the at, at the u.s mexico border it's a crisis, and it's a crisis not because Doug Collins says it's a crisis, not because Don, even, frankly, Donald Trump says it's a crisis. He's made a great case for it. The president is right on target with this. It's a, it's a crisis now that everyone is beginning to understand. Jay Johnson, who is under the Obama administration heading Homeland Security, says it's a crisis. We're starting to see the Washington Post, the New York Times, others say this is a crisis. It is there because the president has raised this issue. He's talked about what we need to do. I'm glad to see Chairman Graham is going to be uh, introducing a bill that we already introduced about eight weeks ago dealing with the Flores decision, dealing with asylum, dealing with the Trafficking and Victims Act, so that we can actually begin to take the incentive, the perverse incentives away for families right. to take an undertrack, a journey that is terrible to get to America. Right. We've got to disincentivize this. Real quick before you go, Congressman, you're, you're on the Judiciary Committee, and Bill Barr is going to testify on May 1st in front of the Senate and House Judiciary. Tell me one, one or two questions that you're going to ask him on May 1st. I want to know is uh, continuing relations if he continues what he has found so far in his investigation looking into what uh, predicated all these uh, investigations coming forward and also the work that he did with Bob Mueller and Rod Rosenstein and actually making sure that we understand the Mueller investigation and what actually came from it in his perspective. And it, Bill Barr has been a straight shooter from day one. It's sad the Democrats have nothing to do now except a story they don't like to attack a man of great credibility in Bill Barr. All right. We will leave it there. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you.